Welcome to Films and Stuff with your hosts, Pete Mitchell and Ethan Hunt. Pete, welcome back. It is Films and Stuff. We have a special episode on Stream or Skip. How are you today? I am great, Ethan. How are you? I'm good. I had a super busy week watching a lot of my assignment, and I'm really excited to give you an update, although it's not so uh, encouraging. But I had had Shining Girls with Elizabeth Moss on Apple TV+. Plus. What did you have? Can you remind me? I had Inside Man. Oh, yeah. So, so Inside Man, before we get into it, it's interesting. Inside Man is normally a Netflix show, but it was also oh. co-produced by the BBC in the UK, and therefore it was not available on Netflix in the UK. Complicated. Complicated. Rights, I had to huh? watch it on, I can't remember if it was BBC One or not. It, anyway, the point is that for our British listeners, you may or may not find it on Netflix. I couldn't at the time of recording. Maybe that will change in the future, but just something to keep in mind. For the rest of you, you should be able to find Inside Man on Netflix. So tell us about Inside Man. Is it it kind of makes me think like it's a documentary or based on a true story? Is that right? It is not. In fact, oh. it is something different. It is so Inside Man is a four episode miniseries. Each episode mm. is just under an hour long, so you could theoretically binge it all in one go if you have the time. Okay. It is, as the name would imply, it is about prison, but not the way you think it is. It's about a man who's on death row in the United States, and that man is Stanley Tucci. No way, the Tucci. The Tucci is in it, and automatically, if the Tucci is involved, it gets bumped up to grade no matter what. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Can't go against the Tucci. He's really good. And the premise is so, it's interesting. The premise is that Tucci is on death row and he is a world-class criminologist. And what does that he mean? is on death row because he killed his wife 10 years ago or whatever it is. And he admits huh. to it. And even though everyone around him doesn't want him to die, like they don't want him to be on death row, they're asking him to put appeals, he says, no, I committed the crime, I have to do the time, or in this case, pay my penance. While he is on death row, he actually takes on criminal cases for other people and helps them solve cases from behind bars. No way! Yeah, really? so the premise is super interesting, right? Think huh. think Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs without the cannibal. Like he's helping other inmates or like people outside are coming to him? Outside. Like, so, for example, in the like first law episode. law enforcement? Huh. Not necessarily law enforcement, but like the example in the first episode, a state senator comes to see him to help him solve a crime that's happening or solve a mystery that's happening that he doesn't know about. So it's not necessarily about helping crimes, but maybe let's call it he solves mysteries for people. So well, it's how did he kill his wa- how did he kill his wife? By strang- Gunshot. Uh, strangulation. And like why they were just having like a dispute or premeditated? I, I can't remember. Deal? I think the idea was he did it because of whatever reason, maybe an adultery or something like that. Mm. I can't remember. And he's so, just like, "Yep, I did it." And he just like admits that? to it. He said, like, that's it. Huh. He admits it. I did it. I got caught. Uh, or maybe he even turned himself in. I'm here to do my time. <laughs> I have no regrets. Basically, that's his, his point is I have no regrets. <laughs> uh, and Okay, cool. So that's the premise. On the flip side, in England, you have David Tennant playing a vicar. And the premise is you follow the life of David Tennant. 
He is accused of a horrendous crime that one of his parishioners does. And I'm not, no. I'm being vague on purpose because yeah. generally Don't give speaking, it away. it's actually quite interesting. And I do think you might enjoy it. So that's why I don't want to give you a spoiler on this. But he is accused of a horrendous crime on based on somebody who works with him in his par- uh, in his parish. And he has yeah. to extricate himself from that crime. And in doing so, like he has to do things that he didn't think he ever would. Sounds mysterious. Okay. And then it, over the four episodes, we kind of learn how those two stories interconnect to each other. How David Tennant gets hooked up with Stanley Tucci and vice versa. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So again, it's a mini series. Only four episodes. It's a really unique take on the, you know, we've seen it with Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs, and I know there's. I feel like I feel a good score coming on. I feel a good score coming on. Okay, so it's a there's. Let's put it this way, I think that in normal circumstances this would be a must subscribe. Unfortunately, the show is kind of let down by the supporting cast. Uh. So. Despite the best efforts of Stanley Tucci and David Tennant, they can't really save the show as it were. Don't get me wrong. Uh, It's still a mooch. It's super close to being a must subscribe. But uh, the, so there's one side character or supporting character who's a journalist and she's just terrible. I don't like her. She's whiny. Uh, She doesn't have good ethics. She's not a good journalist, but she portrays herself to be. I don't know. It just, it was kind of let down by that. And not just her. I I think everyone is kind of a little weak on this. But having said that, again, very close to being a must subscribe. It's a very short series, only four episodes. I think that this is definitely worth a mooch. You can definitely have it on in the background if you want it to be in the background. If you're doing something else, you can definitely do that. I, I, I'm i being purposefully vague because I think that yeah, if and when no you spoilers. have free time, That's I think right. you might want to watch it. And I think you should watch it. It's also hard to have a must subscribe if you're only four episodes. You know, if if you're going to subscribe to something... You're like, I've got to get this platform because I want to watch this. It should be, it should be eight to 10, eight to 12, right? Four is kind of like eight to 10 or eight to 12, but also kind of like, do we have a season two? Do we have a season two? Yeah, you're right. And in this case, I don't think they do. I think it was just a mini series, one season and done. Okay. Inside Man with the Tooch. It's a, it's a new show though, right? This is like a 2022, 2022 show. Yep. Okay. Modern. So it's still relatively young. It's still relatively fresh, which is why I think there could be more seasons coming up. I believe it's based mm. on a book. But in any case, I recommend it. I just don't think you should be subscribing to Netflix for it. Okay. Fair enough. I had this Tell me, week. tell me. I'm super excited. You may not want to be, though. I had Ooh. Shining Shining Girls. Okay. Apple TV Plus starring Elizabeth Moss. Who we know from so many things, include including Handmaid's Tale. She is Mad Men as well. She is exceptional. We talked about it last week when this was uh, assigned to me, where we kind of thought it was going to be maybe like the sisters coming of age thing, or best friends, or road trip, or something like this. It is not. It is a little bit depressing. Elizabeth Moss, she is recovering emotionally from a very brutal attack in Chicago where she almost died. Apparently she was raped and stabbed dramatically and she almost died. She survived and she's extremely emotionally traumatized by it. Does not know who the attacker is although she retains some memory, specifically his voice, that she thinks she could identify him by his voice. And she is now dedicated to trying to find him 
with another journalist who is investigating a series of crimes that kind of follow a similar pattern. So the subject matter is a little bit bleak. Of course, you never like to see anyone who's been attacked or nearly died. It's very, very dark. And when I say dark, I mean like the lighting is very dark. A lot of stuff at night, a lot of dimly lit rooms, you know, even kind of like when they're in an office environment, they seem to be in like a basement with kind of like the, you know, the halogen lights that are kind of like, eh. the whole thing is filmed in a very dark way. And Elizabeth Moss, her character, who's named Kirby, also suffers a lot of naturally trauma from this incident So she flips back and forth in the show between kind of like these different realities. Like she's not able to kind of like, like identify what her reality is. Let me give you an example. She's going to a doctor. She's talking to a doctor. And as a, as, as the audience, we see her speaking to a male doctor. It's a man, you know, it's an older gentleman white hair, glasses, doctor, suddenly something flips and she kind of snaps out of it. And she's actually speaking to a female doctor, right? And she gets really freaked out. Like, where's this other doctor? Hold on. Who are you? What's going on here? And someone will have to rush and calm her down and be like, oh, you know, like you're having an episode. (laughs) Like, what are you worried about? Like, you've just been talking to this person the whole time. So she flips in and out of, and it's hap- it happens, you know, like a couple times every episode where she's, her reality is shifting. And as an audience, someone who's watching it, it's a lot of M. Night Shyamalan, right? Like The Sixth Sense, all these movies where like, it's one thing and then it, it twists very quickly and aha, it's actually something else. As an audience member, I'm really having a hard time like getting behind this because I'm trying to like understand a plot. I'm trying to get in the flow and suddenly it just like flips on me and for no good reason. And I'm feeling less like there is a mystery and more like the rug is being pulled out from me. How am I supposed to know, you know, what her reality is? I'm not able to like guess or maybe i'm able to guess i'm not able to like use clues to understand when she's kind of like drifting in and out of reality it's just thrust upon me so in short i'm giving this a skip it's it's a pretty hard skip to be honest and it's not because elizabeth moss her performance is as always exceptional i absolutely believe the way that she's playing this character, very, very compelling and realistic. But the subject matter is dark, right? I mean, this is just about a emotionally traumatized woman who's trying to use a series of other attacks to try to find her assailant. That's that's negative, to be honest, right? It's it's not even like a a crime who done it or a heist or something. It's it's just a negative subject matter. Even if you get to the end result that this character is is trying to get to, the 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 f- filmography or the videography is very dark. It's just not uplifting. Everything's kind of shadowy and flickering lights, and it's it's not uplifting or visually stunning at all. And the fact that I'm being taken in and out of this consciousness and what I'm watching is suddenly shifting and being, you know, I just feel like I'm being jerked around a little bit. Uh, The show is not working for me. And, And it's based on a novel. And I'm sure when you read the novel, it's like super compelling. Elizabeth Moss always gives it 100%. But I have to say I'm a little bit surprised this made its way to Apple TV+. Plus, and I'd be really interested to see the, the viewing numbers because this does not seem like 
something that everyone's going to be like, oh man, are you watching Shining Girls? I'm really into that show. You know, it's, it's everything is, is kind of bleak at the same time. And while from a, an art perspective, it may be done exceptionally well from an entertainment perspective. It's really, really hard for me to understand who would be excited or enthusiastic about this show. So for me, it's an absolute skip, despite the fact that the the quality is is very high. Oh man, that's such a so first of all, that's a shame. Shame. I feel really actually, so there's a couple things, right? First of all, I feel kind of bad because that's now the third week in a row that you've had a You're a, screwing a skip. me. You I, are really <laughs> screwing me, man. Come on, it's, Pete. It's, it's the throw random me a number bone. generator. Is it? Uh, is it? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. It, I'm so sorry, first of all. And second of all, it's just, it sounds kind of uh, miserable, right? I feel like yeah. this isn't out of Elizabeth Moss's wheelhouse. She just did a really sad, not sad, but like, dour and dark show in the handmaid's yeah. tale i yeah. i feel like it it would be a palate cleanser not just for her but also for us as viewers for her to do something again totally different right we saw her yeah. in west wing and then she was to- did something uh totally different she went to the invisible man or you yep. know that that movie saw that. And yep. that was also like dark, but then she went to yeah. Mad Men, where it's not that it was yeah. a dark role or a, a comedy, a comedic role, but it was fundamentally a different role, and it wasn't as like yeah. twisted as as anything before. Yeah. And then Handmaid's Tale, which is like she took it up to yeah. a notch, but this is kind of like a a lateral move almost, if that makes any sense. Uh, I agree. I mean, I don't I don't know how she took this role, but I can see why she would be potentially attracted to this complex character as as an actor as someone who practices their craft i guess i can kind of see that but in terms of the the story in terms of the you know the the overall entertainment value of the show it is just really really bleak i mean murders okay i mean assaults are really tough to stomach to begin with yeah. You know, mental illness is, is tough to stomach. And there's zero comedy here. And it's it's just about trying to find an attacker. And by the way, the attacker is attacking other women. She's just trying to kind of find the pattern and, and track the guy down. Unless you're really into stuff like this. And by stuff like this, I mean like, I mean, it's, you know, you described Inside Man with Tucci, which just from what I heard, it seems like it's kind of like very evidence-based and there's all these like clues and you're trying to put together like all these different pieces of evidence and it seems like more of a mystery. This one is less of a mystery and just kind of like following on leads or references or insinuations and tracking stuff down. It's less putting together the puzzle and more just kind of like going with the flow. But it 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 really brought me down. I wasn't enjoying it at all. And 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 like I said, performance is great. All the actors actually are are amazing. But I'm not sure who is subscribing to Apple TV Plus and saying, "Man, I watched those three episodes already. I can't wait for episode four. Or you know what? I know it's really late at night. Can't stop. Got to watch the next episode. Uh, for me, this is, it's, it's just not getting there. And I'm, I'm really would love to see the viewing numbers because I, I imagine this is closer to a flop or underperforming than Apple or Elizabeth Moss deserve, actually. Okay. What to say? We did it. Someone else does not have to. Let's look forward to week four, shall we? Looking forward at week four, you've Mm. got a show called Uncoupled on Netflix. What is this about? 
I'll tell you in a second. I've got Avenue 5 on HBO Max. Avenue 5 is sci-fi, I'm very right? happy to tell you two th- one thing. First of all, mm. Uncoupled is a 180 from what Shining Girl sounds like. It's supposed to be a sitcom style or comedy on Netflix starring Neil Patrick okay. Harris. Oh, yeah. Doogie. So, uh, starring Doogie himself. So that's... A good thing. Or Barney. But on the other hand, yeah. actually, no, I'm going to, I'm going to say, I don't want to bias you one way or another. I don't know anything about this show. And I only, uh, wait, because- hold on, hold on, hold on. I know Uncoupled. Can I tell you what I think this is about? I now I remember once you told me it's Neil Patrick Harris. He's in a relationship or like a long term relationship. He gets out of the relationship and now he's got to like navigate being single. It's something like that, yes, right? That's the that's yes. the premise that I know of as well. Yes. That looked funny. Okay. I'm excited about so, that. So I I I will hold off my reservations until we speak again next week about this. Okay. Uh, and not reservations, but my comments rather. Yeah. So that's that. And I have Avenue Five. Now I know of this show, but I never saw Sci-fi? it. Sci fi? It's a, uh, it's a sci-fi comedy. It is sci-fi because it takes place in space, but it's a sitcom. Not a oh. sitcom, but it's a comedy. And it's a it's like a spoof on Richard Branson and Elon Musk and on Jeff Bezos. It's basically a company, from what I understand, and I think I'm getting this right, a company has created a space cruise line. And the idea is they launch from Earth and they go on a cruise around the stars. It's a sitcom in the chaos sense that something goes yeah. wrong and chaos ensues. Exactly. And it stars Hugh Laurie, who most people will oh, know yeah. as Dr. House. House. Or as, you know, the counterpart to Stephen Fry in a, f- a little bit of Fry and Laurie. Uh, Pete, in your experience, can you name a very good sci-fi comedy? Is is there such a thing? Yeah, is there is Clearly, there a success? Yeah. Red Dwarf, this old school British sitcom from the old like I think late eighties, early nineties. Red Dwarf, oh. classic. Okay, really funny because it's not a traditional sitcom. It's sci fi, but it leans towards the adult side, uh, like you know, adult British humor, not adult mm. as in like dirty, but adult as in like they use language. So that's okay. good. You've got that, and then you've got... It's unusual, though, right? It is unusual. You've got the parody of Star Wars, which is Spaceballs, which I thought was one of the best parodies. Quite possibly one of the best parodies of that era. Yeah. Airplane Uh, 2, I guess, counts, but not really. Oh, boy. It's it's not a very... It's not a common genre. It's not a common genre. Lower Decks, si- oh, comedy, yeah. in the same universe as Star Trek. One of the best Star Trek properties available on TV right now. You told me this phenomenal. is amazing. You've, you've mentioned it more than once. It's animated, so I, that puts a lot of people off. But it too skews as in adult animation. Very well done. Genuinely very good. The Orville, which was a great oh, comedy. Is Orville good? I never I watched really, it. I really, really liked it. In fact... I would go so far as to say that the first two seasons of the Orville were doing a better job of being Star Trek than at the time Star Trek was doing on being on TV. Whoa. That's like a really yeah. serious thing to say. I've never... Who's the dude in the Orville? Oh. Seth MacFarlane. He does the yes. voices on Family Guy. Family Guy. The creator of Family Guy. Exactly. Oh, man. So you would think that because of that, it's all just like fart and dick jokes all the time. There's some element to that, but it's not slapstick. It's good. It, genuinely speaking, it was actually quite good. And there are elements of it which actually make it a better Star Trek show than the shows that we saw on TV at the time. Avenue 5 is on HBO Max. It is not animated. It's live action. And it stars House. Dr. House. Uh, yeah, Hugh Laurie. Yeah. And there's a couple other people. I, I think Josh Gad is in it. If oh, I really? remember off the top of my head, oh. I believe he's in there. And there's one other actor, and her name always slips my mind. You'll know her when you see her. She's done a lot. 
Suzy something. Oh, um, yeah, and maybe yeah, yeah. I'm wrong. Maybe when you see her face, you'll instantly recognize her. She's so good. She's been in so many different shows. She's wonderful. I think she's in that as well. I remember seeing a trailer for this show when it was announced years ago. I just, for whatever reason, it just slipped through the cracks. So that's, you know, th- I'm thankful you put it on my list here. So it'll be a good opportunity for me to force myself to sit down and watch it. I mean, I think it's important that you give me a good update about this because this sounds like something that I could be interested in. Yeah. I have a pretty good vibe about Uncoupled with Doogie Hauser or Barney, whatever he played uh, most yeah, recently. Yeah, Barney and How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Doogie Hauser and in that. He was also that. He's bad also guy in the in latest. Matrix. Yeah, I was just going to say, he's also the bad guy in The Matrix. Let's see if I can break out of my funk of three oh skips in a row. Oh my god, I'm really hoping it is. Yeah, these all work out I, look, somehow. Let's put it this way. Yeah. At least I can say that it's a fundamentally different genre for you right now. I think yeah. you have had some, you had reality yeah. TV and then two like heavy dramas. This is not that. This is supposed to be a comedy. Now let's see if the humor yeah. lands. But at least it's supposed to be a comedy. I I really enjoy Elizabeth Moss, and I really wanted to see her playing a more dynamic. Look, that lady, she's just had a lot of trauma in her in her on screen life, right? Nothing ever good has happened yeah. to her. She needs to be in a show where she gets something good. So anyway, I'm putting that aside. Time to move on to uncoupled. You've got Avenue 5. Don't know why it's called Avenue 5. I assume that's the name of their ship or something. I huh? think that's the name of the ship, yeah. Okay. Let's report back next week and see where we are with these two shows. You got it. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you, listeners, for listening. And you know what to watch and what to stay away from. And hopefully you've got two new good recommendations for you next week. And in the meantime, if you have any recommendations for us, or if you think there's a show we should be watching, yes. drop us a line, leave a like this video, drop us a comment, subscribe, let us know. And if you don't want to do it on YouTube, and if you're listening on any of our other channels, you can always leave us a comment on Twitter at FNS Podcast, or you can leave a comment on Instagram at Films and Stuff Podcast. Or email us, aloha at filmsandstuffpodcast.com. We love recommendations and suggestions for what we should be watching and reviewing so you do not have to. That's right. And by the way, it's not just recommendations. If you think we are wrong and we need to do a stronger analysis of any of the shows that we've put on up on our list so far, reach out. We'll cross-check each other's work. We've had some very, very passionate people come back to us about some of the, the takes we took. So yeah, we love hot takes as well. That's absolutely true. And we have, and that has allowed us to, you know, either yeah. double down or go and say, Hey, you know what? Hands up. We were right. You were right. We were wrong. Tales from Beyond is a good example. We had a lot of really passionate people about Tales from Beyond. Remember that? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Pennyworth. Penny's worth or Pennyworth? Definitely on Pennyworth. And Pennyworth, I was a convert. So there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. You you enter that quite skeptical and exited quite enthusiastic. I came in with preconceived conceptions. You know, I thought it was going to be terrible. I watched it and, you know, with the comments that we were left on Instagram and with some suggestions, it actually turned out to be one of my favorite shows of the uh, on HBO Max. Uh, okay, so that's Streamer Skip for this week. We've got two new episodes to report on next week. Speak with you then, Pete. You got it, Ethan. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day ahead. Thank you for listening to another episode of Films and Stuff. If you haven't already, please subscribe and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are downloaded. Films and Stuff. There is no substitute. 